And uh, yeah, good morning or good afternoon, everyone, and depending on uh, where you are. And uh, thanks for joining my session today. So I'm going to talk about digitalization and uh, how I think uh, the wind energy industry to tackle some of the pressing challenges that we've got ahead of us. And um, my name is Giuseppe Ferraro, and I'm the director of digitalization focusing on uh, renewables optimization. Um, I'm part of Green Power Monitor, a DMV company that has got uh, roughly 50 gigawatt of uh, assets under management and monitoring. Um, as you can probably tell from my slide, I'm, uh, I'm going to be talking about, uh, first of all, the challenge, uh, some of the challenges that I think uh, we are going to be facing in the wind energy industry. Then I'm going to be looking at what I think is the, is the opportunity that digitalization has got for uh, the wind energy industry. I'm also going to be discussing about the difference between uh, digitalizing and digitalizing and where I believe that the real opportunity lies. Um, I'm also going to be touching about some of the barriers to make the most out of digitalization and I'll be touching on intellectual property barriers uh, and I'll be presenting two case studies. Um, then I'm going to be talking about data sharing and opportunities to digitalize uh, before closing out with, um, with my presentation today. So um, I will also consider ecosystems as uh, one of the biggest opportunities in uh, digitalization. And uh, for that reason, um, I'll introduce the challenge. So uh, Considering what is happening in the renewables energy industry, and in particular in wind, with the uh, absence of uh, subsidies or the lowering of the, of the tariffs paid for uh, uh, renewable energy produced by wind, uh, there is a pressing challenge on to um, the producers of uh, uh, renewable energy. Uh, and um, some of the other challenges that we are going to be facing in the, in the years ahead are related, to, for instance, to the reduction in uh, operation and maintenance costs uh, in onshore wind and in offshore wind. Um, according to Wood Mackenzie, uh, the costs, uh, OPEX costs are going to be uh, reducing by 5% on average by 2029 and 20% uh, in the offshore uh, industry um, by 2029 again. At the same time, the levelized cost of energy predictions uh, on average in Europe by 2050 are going to be going down by 37% in onshore and 54% in offshore. So, as you can as you can tell, the the stake is quite high. Uh, and if we consider this in combination with uh, um, an aging fleet in uh, in onshore uh, wind. And uh, if we consider that the machines that are going to be installed offshore are becoming of uh, gigantic or titanic dimensions, then uh, the, the challenge I had is quite is quite steep, and that's why I call it the, the squeeze challenge. And um, and the, the image on my previous slide with the with the orange being squeezed is uh, is uh, is a, a clear reference to that. So. All in all, I think that the well optimization is key here. Um, so ways to tackle the the squeeze challenge, I think, are uh, becoming more efficient. So in enabling efficiency in the pre-construction phase and also in the post-construction phase. Many have, in, have indicated digitalization as the big opportunity and a viable solution to solve uh, what I've called the what I've defined the 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 squeeze challenge. And for instance, we, can, we could consider digital twins as an example. Um, and digital twins uh, are quite a variegated topic because uh, they, they have got a lot, in, um, a lot in common with the many of the other uh, digitalization topics. And um, therefore, by analyzing digital twins, we are inherently looking at an array of potential opportunities. So... If uh, we want to analyze where the opportunity really lies in the use of digital twins, so we will um, uh, we'll probably have a, a look at two main topics, and they are digitization and digitization. But what, what's the difference, uh, according to my view, between digitalization and digitization? So in wind, uh, um, we've been using digital means for quite some time. So some of the 
all machines were already designed using uh, a computer-aided design. And uh, if we consider SCADA systems, they were already active and um, working for uh, for some of the of the what we consider today the the old machines. So. Uh, Digitizing was already part of the of, of the wind energy industry when, well, almost from from the origins of uh, wind energy industry. Uh, digitalization goes a step forward, so enables, in my view, the use of digital means uh, um, to enable multiple parties to work together and solve common common problems. So if we consider digital twins, for instance, uh, um, not because uh, they are just a fashionable topic, but uh, because they encompass multiple aspects of digitalization. Um, usually a digital twin is, a, is in its basic form the connection between a, a physical asset to a digital replica of the asset. Uh, it can be wind, it can be solar as in the image that we, we can see on, on the screen at the moment. Uh, and then uh, by connecting the physical with the digital asset, of course, we have to... Um, ensure that data gets transmitted to a digital mean and uh, the data is usually live data that can and usually become so important to to transform into to get transformed into big data another important element of uh, of digital twin is the is the um, span so the, the 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 digital twins span across the entire asset life cycle from the design uh, into construction and then into operation. So the use of digital twins can span across the whole uh, life cycle of the of the of the assets. In terms of functions, uh, that that's very important because uh, digital twins can give us a lot of insights in terms of uh, looking at how the assets are operating, but also looking at potential risks in terms of failures so that the assets might might develop. And another very important element is the capability that digital twins offer to, to look at the past uh, performance of the twins and then project the multiple scenarios to look at what the future might be for the assets that we are operating. So all in all, I think that digital twins are one of the digital tools that enable um, the connection of old and the mix of old and new tools, but in a different way. Where we see a lot of potential, uh, in particular in DMV, is uh, in the, connect the role of digital twins as a way of connecting multiple entities working around uh, the wind assets. So it's not just about the, the digital element of the, of the twins, but it's about enabling multiple specialized entities to work together. In our case, internally, we are linking up um, specialists developing software to domain knowledge experts. But is that the end of the story? I don't think so, because I think that digital twins have got a lot of potential to enable um, the connection between OEMs, between uh, the system operators uh, and the owners uh, and, and the operators of the assets. Um, well, essentially manufacturers of components and manufacturers of systems to all come together and uh, essentially enable the efficiency necessary to solve the, the, the pressing challenges that we've got ahead. Um, so essentially, um, I don't think that uh, the, the challenges uh, ahead can be solved by single parties. So I don't think that, for instance, uh, um, the same level of accuracy or the same level of efficiency can be gained in digital twins, whether they are developed by OEMs only or whether they are developed by owners, operators only that uh, can uh, procure third party systems. But I believe that in the cooperating model uh, offered by the digital ecosystem, there, is, uh, there are big opportunities. And I think that that's, uh, that probably resonates with one of the presentations that is going to come after mine, that is going to be presented by one of my colleagues working for OZF. Um, so, yeah, let's move forward to the next slide. And, uh, you know, with challenges uh, come opportunities. And um, can I see the opportunity? Yes, I can see the opportunity. Uh, and I don't think it's an easy task. Um, but I think it's also worth a try. So um, let's generalize and uh, let's analyze why multiple players uh, will get working together. Um, well, essentially, in, in the, there are a few uh, challenges. And um, for instance, uh, intellectual property 
it's probably one of the potential challenges that is going to hamper the cooperation between different parties when we think about the the, the risks of uh, IP leaks. Uh, on top of this, if we think about uh, data sharing, uh, there is a lot of potential there. But what, what would be the, the incentive for uh, potentially uh, stakeholders uh, lower down in the value chain to share data and information with uh, um, other stakeholders that have probably got more leverage and more, um, more leverage in the, in the value chain of the wind energy industry? Well, goodwill in this case, I don't think, place uh, is enough to, to, to ensure that the, the, the ecosystem cooperation model can, can, can start working. So let's have a look at, um, for instance, in the first place at the intellectual property challenges. So um, let's consider a typical offshore installation case in a pre-construction phase. And, um, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, the squeeze challenge uh, is is, uh, is 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 right present there because uh, there are no subsidies or very limited subsidies, and uh, less levelized cost of energy reductions are pressurizing the industry in a, in a quite variegated scenario. So, if you look at uh, from a technical point of view, for instance, uh, um, the many factors uh, playing a role in the installation and in the optimization of installations in the offshore industry. We can look at the turbine support structure playing a key role in um, uh, turbine capex, uh, then players looking at installation, transport and operation and maintenance uh, with clear implication on the OPEX. Then balance of plant, of course, uh, with again uh, capex implications. And then let's not forget the implications uh, related to the production of energy, so in terms of uh, annual energy production. The picture that I'm showing relates to Renewables Architect. is a tool that we have developed in DMV um, to optimize uh, installations uh, based on levelized cost of energy. But um, I think that uh, a tool in isolation uh, cannot work if uh, not if the various stakeholders involved uh, don't essentially chip in with the information and uh, with uh, um, with knowledge that relates to their area of expertise. So in the MV, we have tried to to harmonize and to propose and to promote the cooperation between the different players uh, in um, involved in the in the in the pre-construction phase. Um, because I think that optimization is is not a one man but is a not is not a one man bad job. So I think it takes a pool of stakeholders to, to become effective. Um, this is even more true if we look beyond the more technical uh, challenges. So if we look at, for instance, uh, how an LCOE-based bidding support um, um, essentially process could look like, after the technical uh, optimization phase that I've, I've showed in the, in the previous slide, uh, we could consider em em engaging in the commercial uh, discussions. And considering that most of the times when we're looking at offshore uh, installations, uh, we're talking about machines that have not been manufactured and they are becoming bigger and bigger, therefore posing many challenges to the various stakeholders involved in the, in the, in the installation. It becomes quite apparent how it's important, rather than looking at a single optimum, looking at uh, an array of optima, and then going and talking to the different stakeholders involved in the, in the value chain to really understand what are the, the opportunities to optimize the, um, the installation. Of course, once multiple optima are multiple multiple optima are achieved, um, the process usually is, is essentially a handover of the insights to um, the developers of the finance. They have got uh, their uh, secret top secret financial uh, financial models, and there I cannot argue against the secrecy because it's the source of. Uh, uh, the competitive advantage to to get engaged in the in the bidding uh, process and then and then winning. So, but this system engineering approach that we have been proposing and that I'm I'm discussing is that something that only relates to wind. In reality, it doesn't because if we look at the maritime industry, my colleagues from maritime have been involved in uh, something that is called the simulation trust center. Um, the Simulation Trust Center is, is a platform enabled uh, um, 
by a third party independent provider, in this case uh, DMV, to essentially ensure that multiple entities uh, um, can share data models and run optimization loops in the various stages of the development or in the various stages of the um, of the life of the marine assets, in this case, ships, so pre-construction, installation, and operation. The idea is that the, the IP is essentially something that gets preserved because uh, models get shared, but it's not possible to see what's, uh, what's inside the models. Uh, it's possible to connect the different models in different ways and run different optimization loops depending on what the pro- what the what was the problem that we are trying to solve and therefore these are tools that enable the um, essentially the lowering of the barrier of the IP barrier um, so the simulation trust center is not just a single example there are the example existing out there like the openm DAO. OpenMDAO is again an open platform that enables optimization studies and has been used uh, in the aerospace industry, in the chemical industry, and uh, has got a lot of applications for, uh, for structural applications. And again, there the role of the platform is a way of sharing information, sharing data, sharing models, safeguarding the IP of the different players for the greater benefit of the, of, uh, of the optimization. The next topic I would like to talk about uh, as an opportunity to improve the way um, wind installations uh, work is, uh, is data. So data is again a big opportunity. And if we look at the operational side of wind installations, so we can all probably agree that the, that the potential gain from the use of data is... Uh, it's uh, so the way of optimizing how wind operate is probably lies probably in the data so data uh, coming from the assets uh, but one question might arise so are we always sure that we use the data in a very effective way and here i describe something that i call the knowledge wall where uh, data get produced by the assets and get analyzed in this case by human the human element and the and the digital element and uh, we can come up with uh, with different results depending on who analyzes the data and uh, also where the data sits and now is uh, is post processed or even um, how the, the the data is uh, is essentially cleaned. So essentially, there is a barrier. There is an objective barrier uh, that doesn't enable multiple entities uh, to to share data and uh, to come up with the, with similar conclusions or consistent conclusions. Uh, I think that there is a solution, and uh, the solution is based on uh, on the opportunity, of course, of digital ecosystems as a way of uh, sharing data and sharing models for the greater benefits of, of the end users. So uh, capabilities of uploading, downloading data, um, reporting, uh, um, and those all those uh, capabilities enable resource liquefaction alongside the density and the integration of resources that in this case is, uh, is data and models. Um, again, in DMV, we have, uh, we've been quite lucky because we have invested heavily in, uh, in data platforms and um, um, and we have created uh, Veracity, which is a, a, um, a platform, a data platform that operates across multiple industries and, of course, operates in the renewable energy industry as well. Um, Veracity has been designed with the classification body mindset, so uh, with the um, intent of becoming the data custodian. But then what we have realized in the last few years is that uh, data by itself is, uh, is of value, but it's not as much of a value as uh, uh, creating the, the framework that enables the use of data, enables multiple parties to access the data, create software create and share the software and the results with uh, with their parties with customers and also uh, enabling the the platform to become a marketplace in this case for the wind uh, for the wind case of course the the data flows in from uh, can flow in from the the wind assets and uh, can be used for multiple um, user cases like energy production assessment, performance analysis, uh, running due diligence, which is, uh, again, another important use case, like uh, the, well, essentially running benchmarking uh, studies uh, based on a wider array of data is, is another user case. Um, 
enabled analytics uh, using a monitoring platform like Horizon Platform is another user case. But as, as I mentioned, we have enabled third-party analytics to access the to access the platform and and uh, enable this ecosystem approach. So, <coughs> excuse me. So the this picture here probably um, reflects uh, what most of the audience is thinking at the moment because I have discussed about the data, I've discussed about opportunities shared for everyone, and then I'm only touching mainly on on DMV enabled uh, solutions. Well, in, rela in reality, in reality, that's not the the old picture because um, what we are looking at is. Uh, um, ways of enabling multiple parties beyond uh, uh, DMV uh, to have benefits, to benefit from uh, from the ecosystem approach. And um, I think there are two main areas where we have been focusing and that pose opportunities for everyone in, in the industry. And those are mainly linked to the business model and the opportunity of, uh, of trading data. Um, as an example, if we consider a, a typical performance watchdog, so uh, an application that uses uh, data coming from uh, from wind assets to determine and um, and spot underperformance, that's not of. Uh, I mean, nowadays is probably a, a common feature in. Uh, um, when we are talking about advanced analytics, but think about the the opportunities of uh, first of all gaining more insights, uh, considering that we can enable uh, multiple parties to trade data in, and that's that's the first advantage. We might argue that um, bigger players with more data will uh, will have a bigger lever uh, compared to uh, smaller players, and that and that's uh, and that's true. That's why I think that the business model can play a big role here. And uh, in fact, if we consider, for instance, the useful insights that even technicians uh, can, uh, can offer uh, by um, recording accurate tickets onto the platform that essentially transforms the ticketing systems into something that can be used to train machine learning uh, models, then the picture probably changes because uh, uh, Rather than well, if if we can enable a system where the value is in even in the ticket, so the smaller uh, element of the of the value chain can, uh, rather than running from one machine to the next one to ensure that uh, they can generate enough revenue, generate revenue by offering uh, unique insights and uh, useful and accurate insights that then gets used by the bigger players and by the. Uh, the managers of the ecosystem, then, then the picture, of course, uh, of course, change, and that's uh, and that's how we are looking at ways of ensuring that the business model uh, and the and the trading model can enable multiple entities from uh, from benefiting from uh, uh, from the ecosystem approach. So, um, I think I got to my conclusions. So, well. In my presentation, I I presented the challenge, so the squeeze ch challenge, the opportunities offered uh, by digitalization, um, the difference between uh, digitalizing and digitalizing. Then I discussed and presented um, um, a couple of, uh, well, two user cases, one on uh, the um, potential barriers and way to overcome barriers uh, uh, linked to, to IP uh, and data sharing. And then, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I hope that the, my presentation gives uh, some food for thoughts in terms of uh, how to approach the future challenges by trying to engage in, um, in, uh, in ecosystems and share uh, more in the industry. So this is my last slide, and uh, thanks for your attention.